You saw the thumbnail. We are here today to talk about the 22 Creedmoor, aka 22 Bleedmoor, baby. <laughs> YouTube world. So excited about this video. So excited to show you this cartridge. I'm always thinking about new cartridges, new videos to do, whatnot, and I got a phone call from a cousin of mine. They own a, about a thousand acre farm and they're having a big issue with varmints and predators. And so I was like, cool, coyotes, I'm on the way. What do we do? And he's like, no, 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 smaller than coyotes. I was like, all right. So he kind of started me walking me through the situation scenarios. And the scenario they're facing is that when they get on the four wheeler or in the truck, they can't get within 300 yards. So he's like, Derek, really we need someone to come down that can help us build something and shoot something from an average shot of 400 to 600 yards. At the same time, I just happened to be watching one of those really cool videos on YouTube of that guy shooting uh, baboons out of trees in South America and thought, man, that would be so cool. So that was all swirling around in my head, 400 to 600 yard shot, potentially even high angle shots if I ever got to use this gun over, over there doing that stuff. And then Manners Composite Stocks posted a photo, not of the stock, just of this color pattern. Literally, just a, a quick photo of the color pattern. And immediately, I out loud said, 22 bleed more. And that was it. So I had to build a gun. Before we kind of talk about what the gun's gonna be used for and everything, let's go through the build really quickly. Now you've seen most of this gun before. Again, like the last video said, you build a solid platform, guys, and you can swap out cartridges and, and styles and feels really quickly. So this is the impact action, impact precision action, Titan, the titanium action you've seen in, in other past builds. This is a 24 inch Bartline carbon fiber barrel I bought as a pre-cut barrel from Studeville Precision. What's that mean? I don't have to send my actions in and have the gunsmith measure them and then take three months to cut my barrel or six months and then send it back. Don't have to do that. Impacts are cut to such perfection that I literally go online, buy a pre-cut, have it shipped to my house, crank that bad boy on the action and I'm running. And you're gonna see in the shots today, again, uh, unreal accuracy, really cool. The stock, unbelievable, sexy, just incredible, incredible color pattern. Love this color pattern. Fantastic. This is the uh, Long Range Hunter by Manners Composite Stocks. You've seen this before. Love this. Love this stock. Really cool. The rings are Hawkins uh, lightweight hunter rings. And for the first time ever, I threw a zero comp optic 4x20 on, on top of the gun. Most of this rifle's life, it lives with a thermal scope on top. But uh, I'm really impressed with this little, the clarity, the compact nature of the scope, Really a neat, uh, neat scope. Excited to be using it today and, and in future videos potentially. And then I've got an old, kind of an older can on here. It's a Harvester. Sounds called Harvester, the first version. And so it's really lightweight. It's about eight and a half inches long, but it's got a muzzle brake component to it, so I can use it for hunting and still get a little bit of recoil reduction. For all of you who saw this in the shooting and, and the, the kind of the intro videos, if you were like, man, that suppressor cover is dope. It almost looks like it was custom made for that gun. Guess what? It was, okay? This was made by Coltac. Now Coltac, I've been using their gear for a long time, uh, but they now have a custom shop where you can go and I'll put the link in the description. Uh, I think it's coltac.com, but I'll put the link there. You can go and design your own suppressor to literally match your gun. It's unbelievable so so cool so i would highly advise you guys to do that uh, dustin and his crew over there make incredible gear i run a ton of their stuff i don't know if you recently saw they were just their suppressor covers were featured in the most recent mission impossible so i figured hey if it's good enough for old tommy cruz it's good enough for d dunk uh but man it, his team punched out just a beautiful suppressor cover with red threads to really match the bleed more aura of this rifle and uh, man, absolutely love it. Uh, performing really well. I went with a corset. Now I run their covers on my competition rig as well, but they uh, have a Velcro strap system that I like, but I thought, yeah, let's try something different. So man, it just came out fantastic. Now, I bought this barrel in May of 21. 
okay? So I bought this before really the craze had hit. And at the time, when my cousin had that conversation with me, I thought, man, we'll do a 22250. Tried and true, great ballistic performance. But when he said the word 400 to 600, that changed the game. And so I got on YouTube, there are a ton of really good videos about ballistic comparisons and, and uh, what you can do with this cartridge. I would highly advise you go watch those. That's where I learned a lot of the stuff that I learned when I was doing my homework and doing research. But today what you're gonna see, this is a, one, a 24 inch, like I mentioned, one in seven and a half twist. I think the free bore is like 0.050. Um, but anyway, I'm running 73 grain ELDMs, Hornady's out of it at, at a little over 3,500 feet per second. She cooking, all right? And you're gonna see the results of uh, on target and range. But the reason is, because I was thinking about What's it take to ethically kill an animal, especially at distance? Well, first off, you need to be practicing with your gear. If you are not practicing with your gear, tripods, whatever you're hunting with, don't shoot anything past 250 yards. Don't do it. So spend time in practice. So when I did homework on what it takes to actually kill varmints and predators, you're looking at smaller game like prairie dogs and raccoons or whatever kind of random pests at that size, anywhere from 60 to 200 foot pounds of energy was kind of a golden standard rule that I saw. The golden rule on coyotes from, you know, both wildlife sources and then dudes talking on predator forums, it, it seems like general rule is 200 to 400 foot pounds of energy. Now I like going with 400 because I think that's just safe. So I'm really excited to stretch this cartridge out today to show you at what distance you could be accurate and still hit with enough energy to drop a yote very ethically. A deer, the golden rule by many wildlife organizations, uh, even state wildlife groups is a thousand foot pounds of energy. So here in the state that I'm in, if you're in the Midwest and specifically and you're not shooting anything much larger than a deer, this can also be a tremendous deer cartridge, uh, especially trying to get a low recoiling rifle option in. Barrel life. I expect to see a thousand to sixteen hundred rounds of barrel life, depending on how hot you run it. I'm not running it hot. It's mainly used as a hunting rig. Uh, today is probably the most consecutive shots I've put on it in, in a long time. So, I you know a thousand to sixteen hundred rounds. When I looked at bullet choice, there are a lot of options, but this thing is really built for that seventy plus range grain of bullet uh, to really maximize its performance. A buddy of mine was running ninety grain eight tips. For me, that was a little overkill, but hey, to each his own. So what I went with, I went this 73 grain ELDM. Uh, and the reason was I had a ton of them. <laughs> it's a great bullet. The ballistics are fantastic. And uh, it's still in that, in that depth of range that I really think maximizes this cartridge. This just went to Sammy Speck, top of mind, super popular. So when I bought it, it wasn't as popular. Components were hard to get, brass was hard to get. That's not gonna be the case moving forward. Hornady's dropping two 80 grain bullet factory loaded ELDX and ELDM come, I believe, January 1st, 24. So there should be plenty of options. I think it's gonna get really popular really, really quickly based on the performance and the things you're able to do with this gun. As a matter of fact, as a follow-up to this, if I can get my hands on some of that factory, me and my buddy over at Precision Rifle Network, Joel Wise, are talking about doing a collab video where we talk about kind of the performance of that factory ammunition and the variance of like loading one versus the other and zero shifts and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for that maybe early next year. Like I said, really happy with the performance, excited to show you what it does downrange. Before we do anything else, we're fancy now. We have an official sponsor of the video today, ladies and gentlemen. Our official sponsor today is Area 419. Area 419. Now, if you're an experienced shooter, you know exactly who I'm talking about. If you're a brand new shooter, or maybe you've been living in a cave for like the last five to 10 years, you might not know. Check them out. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Area 419, if you guys have noticed all my suppressors, I swap suppressors a lot. Why and how? I run Area 419 adapters for my suppressor so I can swap and intermingle suppressors. Like I'm gonna run probably a shorter one on this because of the barrel length, but really easy to do. They make rails, they make reloading equipment, dies. They make presses. They make hybrid suppressor muzzle brakes. They make a lot of muzzle brakes. They make a lot of dope stuff. Area 419, check them out. Bleed more. So you see guys, the target's 415 yards, which is telling me my dope is 1.3 mils up and uh, I need to change the wind input. The wind's not quite kicking that, that much. So 
Uh, it's telling me at that distance, I'm gonna hit with 2,541 feet per second speed-wise, and then I'm delivering 1,047 foot-pounds of energy, which is clearly a lot, um, and uh, something you could very ethically take pretty much any game a deer and under with. One, two. I'm gonna do a tenth. I'm oh, actually probably gonna do two tenths. Here we go. Let's see. Ooh, hold up. Okay. Let's stay there. Why not? Actually, I'll cut it down a tenth. Touching. We gotta figure it out. You can see the kind of power that 22 bleed more is delivering with, baby. Boom, son. Let's move it out to 600 and see what kind of energy we're getting at that distance. Bleed more. All right, guys, here we are at 600. Let's see what kind of, and forgive my, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll zoom out here real quick. Here we go. 60, 612. I'm, I'm scooted a little bit further back. It's telling me a 2.5. Mill uh, elevation hold, still just a tenth on the wind. It's uh, hitting at 2,162 feet per second at that distance with 758 foot pounds of energy. Uh, again, your kind of golden standard is 200 to 400 foot pounds to kill a coyote, 1,000 to kill a deer. Some would argue that this is certainly still safe distance and power to be shooting deer. Definitely safe enough to be taking coyote or any other sort of predator. So let's uh, let's dig in and see what kind of uh, power this thing delivers with at 600 yards. To bleed more, homie. Nine hundred yards. Let's check it out. It's giving me nine fifteen again. I'm scooted back pretty good. It's telling me five point two mils, uh, two mils to four mils of, of wind is probably what I'm gonna hold. It's hitting with 1,650 feet per second speed-wise, but 442 foot-pounds. Again, guys, everywhere you look, it, it always ranges between 200 foot-pounds and 400 foot-pounds is the recommended amount to kill a coyote. This is delivering 442 at 900 yards. So let's roll it. Why not? 5-2, let's do it. Pounds energy, plenty of energy to kill a coyote. Man, impressive little cartridge. Uh, hammer of a gun, obviously. Now, one of the number one questions I saw asked as I was doing my homework and research a couple years ago when I bought this barrel was what is the recoil difference between a 6.5 and a 22 Creedmoor? So I'm gonna send a couple shots down range of 400 yards to check it out. Then I'm gonna switch trigger cam over to a 6.5 Creed that I brought. Uh, why off the tripod? Because this is how I hunt. So what does recoil matter if I'm prone, if I'm not hunting that way? So checking it out off tripod, 400 yards. It's not a very big plate down there. I'd say it's probably six inches by 12 inches. Not quite, maybe more like four by eight, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we'll set a couple down, switch it, check it out. All right, 
Let's switch it over, check out the 6.5 Creedmoor. Switching over to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Man, I really wish I had a way to mount my bipod and my tripod. Oh, wait a minute, I do. Area 419, so hot right now. Rails, so hot right now, so good. Also, forgot my suppressor. Oh shoot, guess I should just grab the one I've been shooting literally all day today and screw that bad boy right on. How'd I do that? All right, 419, check them out. All right, got the suppressor on. I'll talk about this gun build in a different video we're not gonna go through today, but let's check out the recoil difference. Now, this stock is a little heavier up front and a little more uh, balanced weight-wise. It is what it is, guys. I'm just trying to make a general roll here. So we're gonna send three shots down at the same 400 yard target. Let's just check out the recoil variance here. <clears throat> Six, five, Creed more, 400 yards. Check the results on video. My only regret of this build, and I'm getting ready to talk about it in the next video I do, was the fact that I went with a 24 inch barrel. I wanted to maximize speed and for what I was doing, uh, the length of the more modern suppressor, it's a, it's a little bit long, kind of odd. And so anyway, we'll cover more of that later. But other than that, everything about this build, I absolutely love. It freaking hammers by quality components, get quality results. Guys, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Check it out. Check out Area 419. Check out Coltac. Appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Ha ha ha!